Okay, so San Francisco has decided to ban vaping. This is pretty ironic considering that San Francisco is uh, the home of Juul, which is the most popular vaping brand from what I understand. I'm not really into it, but I do understand that uh, a lot of people uh, find it to be uh, kind of a nice... Uh, safer alternative to, uh, say, actually smoking. Uh, there's a lot of people who seem to just like the act of, you know, putting something in their mouth and sucking in something that isn't oxygen. Um, I don't really get it, but I don't need a scientist really to tell me that uh, uh, this vapor stuff, whatever it's, whatever chemicals they're using, you know, short of cyanide is probably uh, a little better for you than, say, uh, tobacco. But the uh, San Francisco government, they're apparently not convinced. Uh, they're upset that uh, these vapes are not FDA approved, and they know that if anything is not FDA approved, well then, uh, humans cannot ingest it into their body, because uh, that's terrible. God forbid that uh, people made uh, whatever free choices they wanted with their own body. I guess the San Francisco government doesn't uh, believe in the old left-wing phrase, my body, my choice. And this ban on vapes really should be uh, viewed for what it is, and that is uh, an extension of the war on drugs, uh, which, frankly, I'm a little surprised by, because you would think that a city as uh, left-wing politically as San Francisco uh, would be the kind of city that would start rolling back uh, the war on drugs. You would think that the people on the left are the ones who seem to understand the most uh, that the war on drugs has failed. But I guess their their faith in the uh, the government in Washington and their uh, infinite wisdom uh, far outweighs uh, any of their uh, left wing sensibilities as far as the war on drugs is concerned. Which is pretty sad if you consider the uh, the history of the FDA and how it pretty much was created one by religious extremists, and two, uh, by corporate interests. That's why we have an FDA. Uh, if you want to get down a real serious rabbit hole, I'd recommend you look into the founding of the FDA, but I mean, it basically started uh, with uh, a, a movement in the early 20th century uh, to where, one, um, you had uh, evangelical Christian groups that really didn't like uh, companies that put all these chemicals uh, into their food uh, to make them, you know, for preservatives or whatever, or to add extra flavoring and uh, artificial sweeteners and all this stuff. They thought it was unholy and against, uh, you know, what God intended for people to eat. And so they wanted to pass laws uh, to try and uh, make sure that people were only ingesting uh, good and holy food. And of course, uh, a lot of the, uh, 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 the food conglomerates uh, you could call them uh, like big meat, I guess is, would, be, would be a term, or big food, I guess. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what the terms that people use to describe these, these interest groups. Uh, but certainly the meat packers had a big hand in this um, because they wanted uh, to put out of business uh, the small meat packers. So they wanted to have these uh, FDA inspections uh, to inspect the meat packers, and they wanted to make it really expensive so that someone who was a small uh, you know, butcher – uh, would have more trouble surviving uh, than, say, uh, somebody like uh, Tyson. They wanted to erect these uh, high barriers to entry so that there was less competition in their spaces, and that, uh, that barrier to entry was, you know, FDA approval. And, of course, a lot of this also overlaps with the USDA. I'm not exactly sure where the line ends. Maybe the meat was inspected by the USDA. I think that makes more sense. Um, and the FDA... Uh, dealt with more, you know, chemical stuff, but uh, basically, it's it's all the same. It's all the same time frame and same reasoning behind the USDA and the FDA. Of course, I believe the FDA is a part of uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, so that would make sense. But needless to say, these groups uh, in the government, these institutions, are uh, by no means. Uh, left wing in nature. So I find it very odd, although I, I shouldn't find it odd because I'm sure that the average person on the uh, yeah, who works uh, for the San Francisco government and especially their elected leaders have no idea the history of any of our government institutions. Uh, I think a lot of people just blindly worship the state. And so this decision to ban uh, the e-cigs uh, may just come down to being something as simple as that. They, they think that the FDA is the arbiter of all that is good and holy, and if uh, the FDA hasn't approved vapes yet uh, as safe, well, then they must be unsafe uh, in the eyes of uh, city government. Now, I predict that their ban really isn't going to do much uh, to stop people from vaping. Uh, they'll just have to do it indoors and in their own homes, and they'll have to go out of the city and buy uh, you know, their vape supplies in bulk. 
Uh, but other than that, I mean, you'll probably still people see people vaping on the streets because, I mean, people shoot up heroin on the streets in San Francisco and nobody does anything about it. The whole place is scattered with needles. Now, perhaps since San Francisco has made a big deal out of uh, this whole vaping situation, perhaps they'll be a little more aggressive uh, in enforcing the ban on vaping uh, than they are, say, the, uh, you know, the ban on other drugs. But still, even if people can't vape in public, uh, you're not going to stop them from doing it in their own home. It's not like the supplies aren't available. What are you going to do, stop every car coming into San Francisco and strip search all the people to make sure they're not carrying a vape? I mean, that'd be nuts. And, of course, vapes don't have any distinct odor, unlike, say, marijuana. So it's not like you can smell it on somebody because all the vapes are flavored and all that. So this is this is really a symbolic measure more than anything. Um, I think it's a way of them trying to stick it to Jewel, who just spent a bunch of money moving to San Francisco and probably just want to spend a bunch of money moving out of San Francisco. And perhaps uh, a lot of the people uh, who are the elected officials in San Francisco are hoping that this will put some pressure on uh, Jewel the, as a company uh, to pay up and uh, fund their reelection, so that they may reverse this decision. That could be this could just be them playing hardball and wanting to get bought off. So they might not even care about vaping one way or the other. So if you gained anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and subscribing. And if you do subscribe, uh, please do click the bell because I do upload every day, and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.